Hello, today I want to show you this card and talk about what I use to make it. Okay, so I'm using my Go Press and Fold to do my foiling, um, which is a Couture Creations product, but I'm using this Hot Foil Plate, which is a Crafters Companion Gemini Oil Press Hot Foil Plate. And the detail on it is absolutely amazing. If I just hold it up a bit closer. They've been really clever that between each flower, there's, there's like a, a deep area. And then the flowers with all that tiny detail um, are kind of raised up and then the detail is on them. Um, absolutely amazing results. Um, so I want to look at this. This is on navy blue card. Come back a bit. Um, let me just tilt the camera up a little bit further. That's a better angle. Right. So this I've done this one on navy blue card with gold foil. I'm going to do one on black card with gold foil. And I'm probably going to do this video in two parts because in one part I'm going to uh, look at how I did the foil edge around the bits that done with the hot foil plate and then I'm going to also look at what I used to colour them because I used mica watercolours I kind of want to show you what I used and what the other possibilities are so I think if I try and do everything in one the video will be too long so this will be a part one and a part two so part one the foiling so before I go any further I'm going to start this warming up on my go press so here's my go press hot plate i'm going to be cutting out from this so i don't need precision placement i just want to make sure it's roughly in the middle okay and that does make it easier when i put my card on top okay so that goes on there this goes back on the base unit to warm up Although my green light's on at the moment, in a moment it will realise it's got a cold plate in there and will start warming up. Okay, so next I want some card. Let me just get my card. Okay, so I actually, I've done this. It's two, piece, two separate pieces of foiling. So I've got a large piece and a smaller piece. So I've cut some card. I've got some A5 pieces. Now, A5, it's kind of a UK, European size. That's 21 centimetres by 14.9. And a piece of card half that size. So one of those cut in half. Um, if you're using US sizes, um, start with a US letter piece of card. Cut it in half for that one and half again for that one. Okay, so that's my card some spare pieces as well and then I need some foil so I'm using this is Couture Creations core collection gold foil and it's not quite wide enough so I'm going to cut two pieces and have a join and I think I want to be able to take it down onto my card I think probably I'll cut about there, that should be fine. And I'll take the piece the same length. Roughly. And then where I'm going to have the join or the raw edge of my foil on my card, I want to just trim that edge because sometimes I find you get a little tiny bit of foil missing along that edge. So that's going to go down on there. That one can just go over the top and I don't need all that. Cut that in half lengthways. Okay. 
then if I make sure I've got both those cut edges against each other okay, I'm gonna just trim the length of this one a bit obviously if you're using wider foil it's less, less messing around okay so I want that and I'm going to obviously I need to take my pieces of foil together in the middle I'm going to do that first and hopefully they stay flat when you do it that one has, that one hasn't this is a low tack tape And then I'm going to take the foil to the cart. And with a piece at that end, and a piece at that end, and then some, piece at the side, some pieces over on one side. That is it. I'm going to do that corner first. It's always best to go onto the foil and then onto the cardstock. I'm still not happy with that piece. That's better. just some tape in a few places and then I can put that onto the go press now that my plate is hot so as long as the, the foil's there that'll be fine I also need my shims now I've got a, a piece of card folded in half and that's going to be my shim so it's a, it's a double thickness of card shim. And I'm just going to lay this on. I say my everything's kind of in the middle, so that should be fine. I'm not going to be using the entire panel anyway. So that on there. Then my card shims. Close the lid, make sure it is at temperature. So I always, there we are, red lights come straight back on. So I obviously lost some heat while I was doing that. I'm going to get the die cutting machine and roll that through. So just bear with me while I get the die cutting machine. Okay, I'm using a Big Shot Plus. So, pull that off the base. And when I've got something with a flat end, like with a a die if you've got a, 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 a straight end on it I like to go through at a slight angle obviously if you've got a narrow die cutting machine you can't and it'll probably just go clonk well, that, that's fine but I say I like to just go through at a slight angle So, so far, just standard foiling as you do with anything. Like that. Okay, but for the next bit, I'm going to be foiling with the back of a cutting die. So I need to take this plate off. And with these big plates, I find it the easiest thing if I just um, get on my cutting lift. 
going to use my pick and lift. I'm just going to move it to the side slightly. And then I'm going to use a silicon mat to pick it up with. Because some of the, the bigger plates, I found they're heavy enough, they can they actually pull the magnet off of there and I've had to re-glue it. So I'm a bit, bit careful with it now. Okay, and on there, ready for the next bit, I'm going to put... Now, this I've worked out from my die cutting machine, the pressure I need. I've got two card shims. This is 300 GSM card. And a thin metal shim. This is the sort of thing you use in your die cutting machine. If you're cutting fabric or particularly intricate die um, or mixed media dies so that they don't cut into your plates too much. So that goes on there as well. This is it's it's a thin metal shim, okay, and that needs to warm up. Okay, so here we have this. Now I'm going to fill with these bits of tape. The one in this corner, and I've just stuck it on the edge of my box so I can reuse it in a minute. And that one there okay and that's left me if I move this piece slightly up to this piece I'm just going to move this piece so that it's not over the corner so it's just on the edge so that I what I want to be able to do is hinge my foil up So I'm not going to take it off completely, I just want to be able to roll it back. Okay, and the reason for that is because to get that foiled edge, I need to foil with the back of this die. But if I just put this on and roll this again, I'm going to get over foiling in the middle of here. And it's going to spoil my, my pattern. Okay, so what I want to do is use a mask. So I've cut a piece of card. And I've just cut this one out, it's, this is because it's a rectangle, and it's just a, a bit smaller than my die. Now this die is quite quite a big die, it's just about the same size as that piece of card. Okay, so that's quite a big frame die. Okay, and it'll fit on the foiling and leave a bit of the pattern around the edges. Okay. So, the next size up I've got was going to be too big. So, that's the size I've gone for. You might have one that's a bit longer, a bit wider, or a different shape. I thought I'd do for this card. For this one, I've, I've used a pair of nesting dies. Okay, uh, but I thought for the video, I, I'd, I'd kind of go back to basics. So, I'm doing a rectangle the outside part and then I'm going to do an oval for the middle part so there we are so I can put that over there I can see where my mask is it doesn't go all the way to the edge of where the die is and it doesn't need to because it'll hold the foil off the die now I've got some quite big pieces of tape I'm going to go onto the die over the foil but I'm going to do it straight onto the die, over the foil, and onto the card. Now, you might, you won't be close enough to the edge in all the places, um, but hopefully you will be in some of them. So, that edge. So, the die, the foil, and the card have got the tape on. Some places you won't be able to, so over here, I'm not close enough to the edge, I might be just, oh, just about, there we are. You just need a few bits to hold it in place while you're moving it onto the go press. Okay, it doesn't doesn't need to be held down with an inch of its life. The foil um, is held down from the original pieces of tape on these bottom corners here. This one and this one, okay. So that goes onto the go press on top of that metal plate. So that's going to go 
row on there. Okay, and I'm going to close the lid. And that needs to heat through because the card needs to heat through from the bottom. To be hot enough to take the foil. So that's going to take probably about a minute to heat through. So I shall just talk about my dies I'm going to use for the oval. So I need to do some more foiling with the hot fill plate before I get to that stage. But for my oval, my actual piece of foiling that I'm going to colour in, I'm going to use that size. So I've taken two sizes down from that. So with that die. And I've cut an oval to use as a mask. Because it, when they're not rectangles, it, it's difficult to get them the right shape and size. Okay. And while I'm waiting again for that to warm up, let's look at the dies I'm using. Because uh, they're, they're basic you know, layering dies. Okay, they're nothing special, but you'll notice the cutting line is nicely in the middle of the kind of backing frame. And that means I get even pressure across that back edge when it's actually in contact with the card. Right. My camera's decided not to focus on this bit. There we go. It'll focus on it in a minute, it'll decide that that's what it needs a picture of. Okay, so oh, there we go, that's better. Okay, so that's that. So my go press has been warming up, it's just gone green again. So let me get the die cutting machine again. Now this is quite a big die I'm doing this with. So I'm going to roll it. Okay, again, if you've got a machine wide enough, I do suggest going at an angle and it's because you'll get better foiling. I don't know if you can see that. You'll get better foiling across these edges. Because it's like with die cutting, when you've got lots of cutting points in a row, and quite often the advice is turn the die around the other way. Well, you can't do that with this. But you can turn the go press at an angle if your die cutting machine is wide enough. And it means you are doing, rather than the whole long edge, you're doing across the corner and coming across. And I'm going to go the other way. very carefully look at what I've got. I'm going to angle the camera down a bit more. There we are. So you can see the go press better. So what I want to do is take that off. I'm going to put the the base back on the the, the hot plate back on the base to stay warm. And I'm going to have a peep. So, what I want to do is just come kind of under a corner, just see, I think that's foiled at that end. I might need to release a piece of tape so I can get to a corner. Now, the die cuts through your tape, so when you peel your tape, half of it will, will stay in place and half of it will come off. Let's have a look. That looks quite good, that end. So I'm not sure it's as good as the other end. Mm. Yeah, 
actually that's not bad it's a little bit shabby chic because obviously you're not using a complete piece of foil you're just picking up the bits that haven't already been used by the foil plate so i'm going to leave that there like that if you have a peep and you don't think it's foiled while it's all still taped down you can just heat it again and roll it again okay so let's remove the tape carefully see piece of foil has stayed stayed there and where it's cut it's come away so i usually start with quite big bits of tape and as i'm working they get smaller and smaller and smaller so i do keep reusing them now if you want to know what tape i'm using it's um frog um Decorator's masking tape for delicate surfaces. It's the yellow frock with tape. I believe 3M do a very similar sort of professional decorator's type masking tape. Okay, so I can peel back my foil. Now that's why we needed the mask. And now I've got a line around. As so it's a bit shabby chic in places. Um but that's the basic technique okay so then you put the foil on the die on and you cut it out so i need to do a smaller piece so i can do the oval so that's done i can take my metal plate off and again I use a, a silicon mat and then I'm going to put my peony plate back on it's in the middle there and put that to warm up. And then it's a very similar process, but with a smaller piece of card. So I need foil. to tape the foil onto the card at this stage because it saves doing it later because if it becomes unpeeled as you're picking your foiling off your go press whatever foiling machine you're using um, then you won't get it back in the same place so just a couple of small pieces of tape on either end other end no i won't put it there so i'm going to put them both at the same end because that will make it easier and I want to lift it up and put the mask underneath so just like that and then that can go on and be foiled so anywhere in the middle and my shims go on no not those shims what have I done with my other shim yeah. it's here So I'll make sure that's nice and warm. While I'm waiting, I'm going to die cut this so I can put this on. So one of the things people say to me is, "Oh, you have to do a lot of waiting for it to warm up," and it's like there's always something I need to do. There's always a piece of floor I need measuring or something needs cutting out and very seldom just waiting around for the go press to warm up and do try and keep your tape you do need to take this down to the outside of where you're cutting because it, the tape can lift the foil okay so i'm not sure 
sure that's quite in the right place. Let's twist it slightly. Okay, so that's taped down. I haven't got time to die cut it. The go press is ready. Just take the camera Oops, up a little bit. Sorry about that. And the light's gone red. So I'll just wait a second. There's my foiling, but this needs to come off. And my metal plate needs to go back on. So let's move it over slightly. two car shims and my thin metal shim okay and then I need to fill my foil up just never gets old that peeling the foil and seeing that and somewhere I've got a mask that I cut there it is right so I've got a mask that I've cut out with the smaller die so I need to decide which bit of this foiling I'm going to want so I'm going to leave that peeled back and I'm going to use the larger die and just kind of Get a feel for what I want to include. Make sure I'm looking at it the right way up. So I think I want to go fairly near the top there, maybe over there. Okay, so then I can put my mask in the middle of that and then take the, the larger die away. Put my foil back down. I can see where my mask is. If I just centre my die over my mask it'll be approximately back where it was a minute ago okay and I can tape that down and you see I'm just keep reusing my bits of tape okay so that's ready to go To put that onto the metal plate and let it warm up. So while that's warming up, I'm going to die cut the big piece of foiling, so bear with me. Okay, so I've die cut that, so you can see it's now got to focus properly nice 
gold boiled edge all the way around and actually when it's die cut there's, well, there's one or two tiny bits missing in the corner there might get this to refocus oh there we are right there we are there's a few little bits missing but they don't really notice and i think the the forward edge just finishes it rather than it just being cut off okay so that was die cut from there um, although i've finished with the die now pull my die off and put that to one side i'm going to I want to keep the scraps of cardboard because when I get to part two, I need to try out my colouring. So I'm just going to take my bits of tape off. I just like to reuse the tape, but also it stops the bits of card getting stuck to things. And I'm going to put that to one side and come back to it in part two. Right, so this, the go press has had plenty of time to warm up now. So I shall grab the die cutting machine and die cut my oval. Okay, I said die cut, I meant roll the go press through the die cutting machine. So here it is. And that can just go through, doesn't need to be a particularly bit of an angle because we're working with the oval. And I do I do usually roll forwards and back an extra time maybe change my angle slightly This is hot. Okay. The die's cut through the tape, so that will just come away and it cools down quite quickly. And I can untape my foil. mask has protected my foiling. Okay, let me just move the camera down a little bit. There we go. Okay, so now I can die cut my oval. So the die goes cutting side down over the top of my foiled oval. To the outside because the inside bits is the bit I want. If you were doing this as an aperture instead, which you could do, then I would tape to the inside because it's the inside bit that becomes your waist. And if you're really lucky, the fold doesn't pull off by on either side and you end up with an extra piece you can use. So that just needs to be die cut. I'll die cut that and then I'll show you. Okay, so there we are, that's die cut, that just drops out, I'm just going to take my tape and my die off, yeah, it's, I think you, you can just about see where I've had my tape. And this is the, the other die cut. Oops. So 
now I can use these together. Get them both the right way up. Sorry. And that way. So I could use them together in a design. Which is what I did on this card. And the centre panel stands out because it's been coloured in. So in part two, I'm going to look at what I used to colour this in. And alternative bits for colouring in. So any bits of scrap you get when you're doing this, keep them for trying out your colouring in on. Um, and then you'll waste less card. Okay, so thank you for watching.